Whenever you are exhausted in Christ, it's because you've been doing too much in your flesh. We get in trouble when we try to help Christ save us. Today's message, Anna Powell. Anna Powell. Amen. A-N-A-P-A-U-O. Anna Powell. Subtitle, Let Me Catch My Breath. It doesn't make a difference who you are. There comes a time where you need to catch your breath. There comes a time when you need a spiritual timeout. And your Savior loves you so much. He's not going to allow the enemy to attack you or tempt you until you recuperate. Amen. Amen. It's at this stage that we recognize and realize the greatness of his love and his grace that he has in store for us. Now, once I show this, what I want to show, Hollywood, is that Christ brings schisms. Amen? Amen. I'll Now, the reason why Christ brings schisms is because when Christ plants a seed in you, that seed begins to be distinguished from everything else around you. Amen? Amen. And it's within that distinction that you were made great. Matthew 11, 28 reads as follows. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you an power. Once again. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you an power. Amen. An power means to cause. Or permit one to cause or permit one to cease from any movement. Mm. Hallelujah. Hissical. We get in trouble when we try to help Christ save us. We get in trouble when we try to help Christ in saving us. Amen. And the reason why we get in trouble, you know, I, I, you know I, I just find this amazing. Are y'all with me? I mean, once y'all get cold, let me know. What I find amazing is the day I accepted Christ into my life, he knew each and every moment I was going to backslide, <laughs> sin, forsake him, leave him, he knew everything I was going to do and he still saved me and still has a purpose and a plan for me and still gives me a promise that he will perform that good thing he began in me. Some of you are not with me so I want to say it again. I find this amazing. What I find amazing is the word says before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I was born black, before I was born a sinner, before I lied, before I cheated, before I became a whoremonger, before I let everybody down who was close to me, he said he knew me. What I love about the Heavenly Father so much is that he will be patient with us in remembering that I knew you before you became a sinner. Y'all not with me. Okay, didn't want to go here. But the word says in Yeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, before I formed you, I mean, formed is the Hebrew word asha, A-S-H-A, -A, asha. Before, before I formed you, before I fashioned you, before I formed and fashioned you in the womb, Y'all not with me. The Bible says, and the word became flesh. Uh, be, before, y'all not with me, before the sperm fermented the egg, 
Holly, before your mother and father ever got together, married or sinning, yes. uh, before any of that, I knew you. That's the Hebrew word yad. It means to know. I mean, I knew you. And because I knew you, God is not with me. He knew you before you came to planet Earth. I'm talking to you, E.T. He knew you before you came to the planet of Earth. So here it is, Holly, that you're born. I mean, maybe you were born in a single family. Maybe it was just your mother. Maybe it was just your father. Maybe you were adopted. But here it is that he planned all this. Maybe it is, Holly, that the, the half of your life you were a drug addict. He had to wait until you had fulfilled all your time being a drug addict. Y'all not with me. Stop acting like he saves people late. I mean, he doesn't save people late. He doesn't deliver people late. He saves them at their birthday. I mean, their birthday is when they are born again. Y'all not with me. I mean, like, when you were born, and yet he had all this patience just waiting. Waiting for you to build this track record. Wait, wait, waiting for you to build this testimony. Are you with me? Here it is that he waited for us. And here I am today. I'm, 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 I'm about to say 37, man. I'm feeling good. I mean, I'll be 47 next month. Here I am, 47. Holly, I got saved at the age of nine. I'm in. Mean, both of my uh, grandfathers were ministers. Uh, my father's father, Pentecostal. My mother's father, a Baptist pastor. My father, backslidden and pastor, I mean, a bunch of uncles, hallelujah, aunts, hallelujah, ordained, hallelujah, and we knew in our family that you couldn't get in on your grandparents' merits, I mean, so though I grew up in a household, hallelujah, that we reverenced the Heavenly Father, we knew the Heavenly Father, I accepted him into my heart Amen. Amen. as my personal savior when I was nine. Hallelujah. But then, hallelujah, I had to struggle all throughout my teenage years because no one told me, hallelujah, that I was going to skip over teenage years and just be an adult. Okay. So here it is, I mean, I lived my whole teenage years expecting to go to hell. Yeah. Every moment I was just waiting to go to hell. I, was just, I just knew I was going to hell because I couldn't do nothing right. I mean, but no one tells teenagers that no teenager does anything right, save or unsaved. Y'all not with me in the morning, maybe y'all sure. I need you with me for a moment. But here it is that I begin to meditate how, that he knew all that and he loved me so much that he had the patience. He had the patience to wake me out. I'm going to wait you out. I mean, how is it, how is it you going to wake me out? Yeah, I'm going to wait you out because you see, I, my word cannot return unto me void. I mean, I called you saved. I called you delivered. I mean, I called you an apostle. I called you a bishop when you were a whoremonger. It's amazing. He calls those things that, that be not as though they were. I mean, while you were yet dead in your trespass and sin, he sent Christ to die for you. While I was out there whoremonging, he was calling me bishop. While I was out there whoremonging, he was calling me bishop. He was calling me apostle. He was calling me saint. I mean, he was calling me minister when I was out there in my sin. Uh, he was always calling me son. He was always calling me uh, dear. I mean, even when I tried to get rid of him, I tried to do everything. You ever went out of your way to try to make the Heavenly Father mad at you? I did everything. You know, back in the old days, hallelujah, you know, there's one sin you can't be forgiven for. That's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So I said, you know what? I'm going to blaspheme the Holy Spirit because maybe he'll kill me then. I'm still here. Okay, you know, let me tell you what's so good about a testimony. A testimony is good when you tell people like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's, that's when you, I'll never forget my, my sister, my oldest sister. She was my closest sister. Hallelujah, I, uh, we're, we're not close at all today. But Kim was my closest sister by far. I'm not sure. You know, she was four years old, older than me. She ran track at East Orange. I mean, and she was on the color guard. When she used to run track, Holly, I used to train with her. You know, I used to jog with her. I mean, but uh, and my whole family got saved because of Kim. I mean, Holly, my whole, she brought my whole family to Christ. I mean, but she gave me a Thompson Jane Thompson Chain Bible for my 17th birthday. And she would always buy me Bibles. I mean, and uh, that Bible was very dear to me. Holly, but because Holly, I was all backwards and crazy, oh my goodness, I'm taking too much time. I mean, I felt like the Heavenly Father was taking too long to bless me with the wife because in the old days we were very strict. I mean, I didn't listen to worldly music, I didn't go nowhere. I mean, so I wasn't going to the prom unless I went with my wife. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Yeah. So here I am, like 17, looking for my wife, and I'm like, where is she? You know, she's late, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like, Y'all, I've been serving you since I was nine. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Now, this is very hard because I didn't get married until I was 39. You know, it's like, y'all, where, where was my, like, I can't go to the prom. I can't go to the prom with, with, with a wannabe. You know? 
But as soon as I backstage, I think about all the people wanting to go to call with me and I'm like, oh man, you get mad at y'all. You see, you left me out there, you left me hanging. I mean, but anyway, I mean, you know, my wife didn't come to my shopping surprise. And because my wife did not come, I took my Bible and I took lighter fluid and I put lighter fluid all on my Bible and I put a match to it and I burnt it. I mean, and even though I burnt that Bible, Today, I teach from a Bible. Today, I preach from a Bible. Today, in the name of Yahshua, I know this Bible better than anybody. I know the Bible. But if Christ could forgive me for burning the Bible, if he could forgive me for burning the Bible, surely he can forgive you. But what, what's even better about that is that when I was burning the Bible, when I was burning the Bible, when I lit it, when I, when I, when I lit the match, you with me? I mean, when Satan was like, now we got him. Yahweh was like, leave him alone. He's my servant. Amen. That's my bishop. Amen. Yahweh was like, he's going to be flaky until he's 30 years old. Amen. He's going to be in and out until he's 30. Amen. I'm going to wait. Y'all not with me. I'm 17 then. I'm going to wait. Amen. I'm going to wait until he's 30. Amen. I'm going to wait. It, some of you don't know what it means. What that means is like, oh, oh my goodness. Like, I, sometimes I have to turn away from him. Amen. I'm going to have to turn away. He waited. Yeah. Yeah. He waited. He waited for me. Amen. He waited for me. Amen. In the midst of all that foolishness, in, in, in the midst of all that, all the young thing, that's, it's amazing. At 17, I burned my Bible. At the age of 19, I tried to kill myself. Ooh. Amen. At the age of 19, you know, I didn't, I didn't halfway try to kill myself. You know, I went all the way to kill myself. I cut both of my wrists, and of course, I still have the marks here on, on both arms. Amen. You know, I tried to take my life, you know. And, 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 and when I felt my life believed in me, the only thing I could do was speak in tongues. But yet, here it is that I burned my Bible at 17. I tried to kill myself at 19. I tried to run away from Yahweh, so I joined the army. Signed up for something like 20 years. Amen. And yet, in the midst of all that, he still waited me out. He still waited me out. He waited me out. He waited me out until I couldn't fight him no more. He waited me out until I just got so tired with me. I got tired of trying to save me. I came to a place. Amen. Amen. You, you listen. Yes, sir. You see, when you believe you're good, yes. you gotta, when you believe you, you're good, you get mad at Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. When you believe you're good, yeah. when you believe I gave you all my teenage years, yeah. I went to college, I went to NJIT, and I preached, and I told people I was a virgin. <laughs> people used to laugh at me, but it never bothered me. Amen. And when you... You give it all. I received the gift of speaking in tongues when I was 15. Not like today, you know, you can just receive the gift. In the old days, you had to tarry for it. You really had to want it. Then you face so much disappointment because when you're young, sometimes the hardest word you can receive is the wait. And I knew what he was doing. I knew he was waiting out my youth. Y'all not with me. I remember when I totally rebelled against Yahweh. I totally rebelled against Yahweh when I was 23. And I remember the day Yahweh greatly blessed me. I was working at AT&T Bell Labs in Middletown. Hallelujah. I was 23 years old. I had a brand new Corvette. I was a manager. I was the youngest person there, making $68,000 a year back in 1989 or 90. And I remember I was working at the, the council, consoles. I was setting up the computers and I always had my Bible because I was always, you know, thankful. And I remember Yahweh telling me, he said, I want you to stop praying for a wife because you will not get married before the age of 35. And it just broke my heart. It's like, Amen. you took my teenage years and now my 20s. I gave you my teenage years. Yeah. And now, you are my 20s. Mm -hmm. Half of my 30s. Yeah. And I said, I'm not serving you anymore. Yeah. I, it's amazing when you know his voice. Saints, when you know his you know you know when you know his voice because you will you will argue with him. Yeah. 
Yes. If you argue with him, you know his voice. Yes. If you never argue with him, you don't know his voice. If you argue with him and you tell him, I'm not doing it. You know his voice. Yes. I was 23 years old. And that was, I was, I, you know, I, I wasn't trying to sin. I went all out. And I lost everything. And it's amazing. Y'all listen to me. I knew I was going to lose everything. But I was mad. I knew I was going to lose everything. You know? But I was mad. I, I knew I was going to lose everything, but I was mad. Y'all not with me? He waited me out. And look at me now. Yeah. I got a white dude. Come on, beautiful girl. He waited me out. And if I die in my hair, I look younger than y'all. But he waited me out. That's love. Can you, can you see it? The devil knew he got me. Yeah. Y'all was like, no, 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 no. No, no, give him some time. Yeah. I mean, when, when I went on all my ranting and raving, yeah. how he didn't love me, yeah. how he had forsaken me, yeah. when I'm arguing scriptures yeah. with him, it says, commit your ways unto Yahweh, he will give you the desire of your heart. But you leave me hanging. Yeah. And all that time he wanted to teach me something. Yeah. I alone am your savior. Yes. I'm not going to allow a woman to save you. Yes. I'm not going to allow a feeling to save you. I'm, I alone am your savior. And he brings you to a place. He brings you to a place where he alone is your savior. But when I meditate on it, he, he waited. He waited me out. He waited me out. And some of us, he's waiting you out. I mean, but as he is Waiting you out, it's Anna Powell. Let me catch my breath. Holly, y'all is catching his breath. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's letting you catch your breath. It means the cause or permit one to cease from any movement. Are you with me, saints? The cause one to cease from any movement. Amen. Anna Powell also means, Father, you are worthy. It means to cease from labor. In order to recover and collect your strength. Once again, to cease from labor in order to recover or collect your strength. Amen. It means to give rest. It means to refresh. Are you with me? Here it is that the Holy Spirit is telling us this morning, I'm going to refresh you. Are you with me, saints? I want to listen. I'm going to refresh you. You know, I take it very personal when my family gets sick. I mean, I take it very personal in the name of Yahshua because I believe as the head of the household, that's, that's part of my job, Amen. is to keep my family well. Now, he, here it is that Christ, Yahshua said, and a pal, I mean, he, he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cause or permit you to cease from any movement, to cease from labor in order for you to recover them. Recollect your strength, I mean, to give you rest, to refresh you. And this morning, yes. the Holy Spirit is refreshing some of us. Yes. Some of us need to cast our pearls before the swine. Listen, I want to tell you how good His grace is. His grace is so good that you will cast your pearls before the swine. Mm. And before you go down there and stick your head in the mud, you'll see those pearls pick back up again. He'll just say, pick them up. He has a way. And after you mess up and throw everything away, it doesn't take long to find what you threw away. Yeah. Yeah. He will show you exactly where it was. Yeah. He said, I had it in safety. He said, I know you. I know you. I need you listening. I'm in. I'm so thankful that he lived through my mess up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He lived through my, you know, when you think you all that in Christ, yeah. the only thing that breaks you down is fault. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, listen, some of us, we have fallen so many times, we think twice before we rebuke somebody. Yes. 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 My man, I will never tell a young person, you're not going to make it. How can you tell a young person you're not going to make it when I was young, I didn't make it. I mean, but yet, in a power, I mean, he refreshed me. He, my friend called me, I mean, my friend from high school, and you know, and uh, Aunt, you know, you know, we were very close. I mean, uh, I'm two days older than him. I mean, he used to live on the third floor, and 
They moved on the good side of town, and then hallelujah, he got in trouble. I mean, I like telling this story. You know, he got in trouble. You know, he was selling drugs, and um, he got in trouble over on uh, Munch Street. But there was a, a police officer who was a part of it. And, you know, he's like, yo, you know, I'm, I'm looking at like 15 years. I'm like, look, man, you got to go in there and tell him. Use a user, <laughs> you know, use an addict, <laughs> you know, uh, man, and uh, we prayed, you know, we prayed, I used to pray crazy prayers, and then I, I, I fixed him up a resume, you know, said he graduated from Uppsala, you know, Uppsala don't exist anymore, you know, uh, you know, and I taught him all computers, he went to North Carolina, and he's got a house now, he's got everything, you know, and um, anyway, he called me, and uh, I was happy because he got saved two years ago, Amen. and uh, and you know, he, he called my father. And we were talking, and we began to say, you know something? We know we did a lot of crazy things. You know what our prayer is? Man, I believe the people live long enough to get saved. Yeah. We like to pray for some of these young people to outlive their craziness. Y'all not with me. You know? He was telling me how he, he's ministering to Trisha's brother, Eric, you know. Um, and how, you know, how, how his father got saved, how my father got saved. And I'm like, you know something? If people can live long enough to get past their craziness, that youthful lust, y'all not with me. Give me a moment to catch my breath. Don't you know Christ loves you enough for you to catch your breath? I mean, he loves you enough for you to catch your breath, for you to get refreshed. You with me, saints? For you to get refreshed. I mean, for, for you to for you to breathe it in, in the name of Yahshua. And this being so true, let us understand that the Heavenly Father, he's given us a second breath. I mean, let's do a quick exegesis. It says, come unto me. I mean, come is the Greek word, deuta, deuta, I mean, D-E-U-T-E, deuta. D-E-U-T-E. -E. It means to come here. It means to come speedily. It means to come now. So Christ is always telling you, come now. It's amazing. You know, whenever Christ is telling you to come now, do you know what he's telling you to leave? Leave, leave all your failures. Leave all your bad memories. Leave, leave, leave. I want you to forget about that. I want you to forget about how you messed up. Because the devil always wants to remind us how he messed up. I never, when I, oh man, I can't remember what I was telling us. When I started this ministry, I just knew it was going to fail. I just knew it was going to fail. I mean, come on, y'all. You know, you got a call in your life. Y'all with me? Come on, I don't have a, you know, a sweet, clean testament. You know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the ministries I started before this ministry fell. So I just knew this ministry was going to fall. I just knew it. I knew it was just a matter of time before it would fail. Because that it, failure had become the norm to me. But when he tells you to come, I mean, it means to come right now. He, he said, come unto me. Unto me is the Greek word pros, P-R-O. P-R-O-S, pros, where we get the word pro from. Amen. Pros means to your advantage. Amen. Come to your advantage. Come now. Come to your advantage. Come to me. All you that labor. Amen. Labor is the Greek word. Cop E A O. Cop E A O. That's K O P I A O. K O P I A O. I want you to listen to me. Cop E A O means to grow weary, it means to grow tired, it means to be exhausted. Look at the play on the words here. He says, I want you to come to me if you're exhausted, and if you're exhausted, I'm going to allow you to catch your breath. Amen. You see, some of us, we are exhausted. I mean, y'all never like this. Whenever you are exhausted in Christ, it's because you've been doing too much in your flesh. Amen. Whenever you are exhausted in Christ, it means you've been doing too much in your flesh. Uh, listen, uh, 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 I have the easiest time being saved now. You know how come I have the easiest time being saved? Because, you know, I really believe in the scripture that he orders my steps. Y'all not with me, I mean. I believe you, Brother Lovell, I believe he orders my steps in temptation. I don't believe any temptation can come my way unless Christ signed the rule. That can happen. 
Amen. And now, Holly, because he's that great mathematician, he knows exactly what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go. But my Bible says, with every temptation, he makes a way of escape. Oh, my goodness. He's so good. So I begin to recognize a certain temptation. I was like, give me five minutes, Yahweh. Give me three minutes. He's like, get to the exit. Give me three minutes. You have it. You have it. You see the exit, and you just, just go on. Let me get one more look. One more look. And then he loves you so much, just like Lot and those angels. I mean, they start pulling you. Wait, 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 wait. Here I come. I'm coming. And he's so full of grace. He says, I knew you. <laughs> Come on, y'all not being honest. Some of y'all who've been saved a while, y'all don't want to talk about it. When you've been saved a while, you know sometimes you want a thin thread. Amen? And like, y'all, just give me three more minutes. Just two more minutes. Just give me one more sin. Y'all not with me. Come on, top line. Let me hit it just one more time. Then I'm coming back. I'm, come on, some of us, we back. Some of us, we made it. Y'all not with me. I mean, okay, y'all can't handle it. This is my grace. This is my grace story. And the grace story he gave me, he'll give you. He'll, he'll give you. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> But that's how, how, how much he loves you. you have, that's how much he loves you. He loves you so much, he will allow you to catch your breath and understand what's really worth it in life. He says, I want you to come to me, honey, not for my advantage. I want you to come to me for your advantage. I want you to become a pro. I want you to let that go. We always want to hold on to something that's hurting us. Why is that? We want to hold on to people who hurt us. We hold on to that by remembering how they hurt us. Amen. Why do we why do we hold on to things that hurt us when he says, nah, whatever, whatever has caused you to grow weary, whatever has tired you, whatever has exhausted you, y'all not with me. Do you know what tired me? Trying to save me. Let me tell you how some of y'all mess up. Y'all mess up because before you come to church, you plan it all out. Okay, when the bishop comes, I'm gonna say, how you doing, know, Bishop? Yes. Then yes. I'm yes. gonna hug the bishop. I don't wanna hug him too tight. Yes. No, but he hugs me tight. Well, maybe he does well, maybe he does mean maybe maybe he wants me to hug him tight. Yes. Maybe he's free. Or maybe not. And you got listen, you got all these things going in your head and then listen, some of y'all come on, I know I'm here from the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that's a come you, you you have such a hard time because you're off script. You're like, oh off script, wait a minute, give me a minute, give me a minute, give me a minute. It's like you know, I always say what's on my mind, you know? But you can't Walk in love like that. Amen. You, 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 can't walk in, you can't walk in love like that. I mean, he says, come to me for your advantage, all you that labor. I mean, and are heavy laden. Heavy laden is the Greek word for tinsel. For tinsel. P-H-O-R-I-T-Z-O. P-H-O-R-T-I-Z-O. For tinsel. Listen to what fortizo means. Y'all with me? Father, you're worthy. Uh, I feel so good, you know. Uh, all of my daughters are different, you know. And it's amazing, you know, I look at my daughters, and I'm just, I'm just so thankful for my daughters and the name of Yahshua, you know. But I look and see the miracle. And I love playing with my daughters. Because the older you get, time goes by. So now I'm on this whole thing. In 13 years, I'm going to be 60. I mean, I'm going to be a cool-looking six-year-old man. I mean, but I got to plan that out right now. And I'm plan, I'm, I'm, you know, man, I'm going to make 60 into the new 40, you know? I got to, you know, because my kids are still going to be young. I mean, but the thing is, I don't have a fear of 60. I have an expectation. I have a great expectation. Why? Because Anna Powell, Yahweh said, I'm going to let you catch your breath. Ooh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you breathe it all in. I'm gonna let you catch your breath. And sometimes we just keep running, 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 keep going, 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 going. And before you know it, we're broke, we're exhausted. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we, we are heavy laden. I mean, are you with me? Are you with me? We're heavy laden. Fortenso means to place a burden upon. It means to place a load. It means to be burdened with. He says, if you got labor and heavy laden, he says. Come unto me, to your advantage, amen, and I will, I will, I will give you, once again, it's the same Greek word, and power. I will give you rest, I will allow you to catch your breath, amen. And some of us, where we've been going wrong, Holly, you haven't been envisioning Christ loving you enough. Everyone listen to me. Christ loving you enough 
for you to catch your breath. Amen. He loves you enough. Amen. For you to catch your breath. Amen. And in loving you so, amen, he calls you, hallelujah, to be mighty and great. Now, what I find amazing is Hannah Powell, let me catch my breath. We must come into an understanding that Christ knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. And let me tell you where I am in my life now. I believe that the Heavenly Father, his time is so precious, he's not wasting his time on me. For y'all don't know what that means, let me tell you what that means. The reason why he's spending time with me is because he knows he's going to save me. If the Heavenly Father is dealing with you, he's not going to waste time on you. In other words, he knows he's going to save you. When I come to a place in my life, I'm no longer going to fight or resist the Minister Ramon from saving me. I really believe he got this. I believe, y'all not with me, I believe he doesn't need any of my help whatsoever in saving me. I believe he, he's got this. I believe the only reason I desire him the only reason I desire him is because he put it within me. The only reason I desire to be saved is because he put it within me. The only reason I desire to preach is because he put it within me. Because my Bible says, there is no good thing in man. There is nothing good in me. Any good thing in me, Christ put in me. And if Christ put it in me, he's going to finish it. Amen. And now he's like, I'm going to give you a moment to catch your breath. Amen. Are you with me? I'm going to give you a moment to catch your breath. When I was young, I always thought I was being judged. When I was young, I always felt like I was going to hell. Now where I am in my life right now, and I need y'all with me because some of y'all can't handle this. Some of y'all can't handle this, but all of our faith is different. Christ Yahshua did not bless me with my four daughters for them to go to hell. Amen. My daughter's going to hell. Amen. You say, how do you do it? Because I'm praying to me. Because I recognize how they, that I'm saved by grace. I recognize that I made so many wrong choices, but then in my wrong choices, he overrode me. I mean, he got the wrong women out of my life. I mean, he, I, he loved me so much. I mean, come on, saints, all of us got different love. He loved me so much that he preserved me when my heart was hard against him. He preserved me when I was in the go-go bars. He preserved me when I was out, out there doing all types of things. He preserved me through all of that. That's through divine order, not through mistake. That's through divine order. He kept me in the name of Yahshua. But yet, I, he can, I'm going to allow you to catch your breath. I mean, I'm going to allow you to fulfill hallelujah, your testimony so you can reach the people I called you to reach. And now, now that I caught my breath, I mean, I mean oh, I'm, I'm just so thrilled, but I have a patience. I was meditating, you know, uh, that I don't, I don't dislike anyone. Some of you can't handle what I'm about to say. I don't have a beef with anyone. And I, come on, saints, the way I am, if I'm going to tell you all, I'm going to tell you all. But I ain't going to go to sleep on it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's how I define friendship. But I don't, I don't have a beef with anybody. I mean, there's nobody that I have a beef with. Because it's not worth my time. Because I recognize in the name of Yahshua that the grace that he gave me, I mean, he can give to someone else. First Corinthians 16, 18 reads, For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge you them that are such. In other words, Christ called us to refresh people too. Once again, for they have refreshed. You have been, that's the same Greek word, and a power. Amen. To cause, permit one to cease from movement or labor or in order for them to recover and collect their strength and refresh themselves. We should be refreshing one another. Right. Amen. We, we should be refreshing one another. We should be giving people the time to catch their breath. I mean, you know something? Y'all ready to hear this? You have to love people enough to allow them to backslide. <laughs> Some of y'all missed this. I mean, and Christ allowed you to backslide. I mean, I mean, He allowed you to back. There comes a time when you have to allow people. You just have to give them over to Christ's trust. You can't call them every five minutes, tell them, Baba, giving them words, giving them rebukes. I mean, giving them prophecies. No, I mean, you got to draw back. You got to pray, especially if they're young, because sometimes when you're young. You just made them, I'm not going to listen to my mother. I'm not going to listen to my father. I'm not going to tell my mother what I do. I'm not going to tell my father what I do. 
You with me, saints? That's when you have to draw back. Ollie, but that's when you got to also catch your breath, too. Because it takes a lot of faith to believe y'all are going to save somebody who doesn't want to be saved. Yeah. I mean, and I know, because what I love about my sister Allison, you know, I'm going to speed up. What I love about my sister Allison, me and Kim, we'd always get into prayers. You know, she always believed Christ was coming back the next day. And we would, we would get all prayed up. Sometimes we'd even get my mother in the prayer. You know, we get the whole neighborhood in the prayer, and we come to Allison. Bible in the hand. Alice, would you like to pray with us? No. <laughs> oh, come on, now you, you have a better, you can't even, no, I don't want, so you want to go down, yeah, yeah, I, want, I don't want to be saved right now. <laughs> what? What you mean you don't want to be saved right now? Oh, that's it, I, 15 minutes, I put the girl in hell. You know, I mean, boom, 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 boom. You know, and it's like, it's amazing, it's amazing that she goes to my church today. You know, y'all don't know, we did not get along. <laughs> I don't even think we really, we really talked until she went to college. Because when she went to college, every time she come home, she brought, ooh, she bring home these good looking girls and they spent the night. <laughs> you know, she like what, she's a year, and, a year and six months older than me, but she got skipped. So it's like, I was like, wow, you know. And so I had to pick them up from Penn Station. I'm so crazy, I don't even know where Penn Station is, but I live in Newark, East Orange, you know. I would get lost every time, you know. I'm in. But me and Alice, we didn't get along. I remember after she graduated from college, she used to take the bus and I had a car. And I told her that I would only take her to work if she paid me twice as much as she paid the bus. <laughs> <laughs> she paid me too. <laughs> Practically be angry. But the thing is, to have my sister in, in ministry now and to have her diligence here, that's only Christ. Yes. Yes. Only Christ can do that. But what Allison reminds me of, Alice reminds me of someone drawing back. Say, John, not with me. I used to go witnessing, you know, and they would say, your sister was smoking weed on the bus, you know. And, you know, I thought I was like her father, you know what I'm saying? You know, she used to work at East Orange Library, and my mother used to make me pick her up. And, you know, I didn't grow until I was like four foot nine until, um, until I got like 16. And, you know, she would insult me like, what are you doing? You can't protect me, I can beat you up. And I'm like, whoa, come on now, I'm here to protect you. <laughs> do, you know, do you know how embarrassing it is to wait for your sister at the library and she gets all like, oh brother. <laughs> she like walking at me. I, Wait up, I'm your protection. <laughs> but now to witness that, that, that has strengthened me so much concerning my own children. But the Heavenly Father is telling us that we can refresh one another. Amen. And saints, when you refresh one another, you give one another hope. Amen. You give one another strength and a power. Amen. Holly, we were called to allow each other to catch their breath. Don't be so easy to write people off. Amen. When Christ, hallelujah, knew them before they came, hallelujah, into the earth. John 10. I'll come back to 9 in a moment. 1019. But I, I, it's very important for people in the ministry to allow the youth to grow up. The youth are not going to be perfect. They're going to make mistakes. And if you just meditate on how you made mistakes, but let them catch their breath. As long as you pray for them and let them catch their breath. I mean, any young person who has a desire to serve Yahweh, that desire doesn't come from them. I mean, Tatiana told me last night, she said, Daddy, do you know why I like Yahweh? I said, why do you like Because he's smart. <laughs> That's why I like him. Because he's smart. He just knows everything. I said, you know something? That's a good reason to like him. <laughs> John 10, 19 says, you with me? There was a division, therefore again, amongst the Jews for these sayings. Are y'all with me? This is when Christ is speaking. Now, I need you with me very speedily. Christ brings schisms. Now, Christ brings schisms, I mean, Christ brings schisms because when you move on his word, it's going to cause you to be distinguished. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, when he gives you his word, his word within itself gives you an inner power. 
it gives you a rest. When you don't have rest, it means there's too much of you in what you're trying to do. I mean, that's how we become weary. I mean, you can't think your way saved. Y'all not with me? You cannot think your way saved. And some of us, we try to think our way saved. We try to think our way out of something. And the only thing it does is makes you, holly up, uh, uh, for it's tis up. I mean, uh, to place a heavy burden on you or a heavy load. None of you should ever feel burdened from salvation. If you feel burdened from salvation, you're doing something wrong. Uh, because you can't save you. Because you can't save you, it should never burden you. Mm. Amen? But when Christ gives you a word, it's going to bring a schism. It first brings a schism in you. Amen? Because there's something that you have to discard. There's something that you have to remove. Are you with me, saints? Schism means division or disunion within. Amen? So sometimes Christ gives us a hand of power uh, to catch our breath because there's a division within us. Amen? You would be schism is division or disunion within, or separation from. Schism is also division within a church or religious body over some doctrine difference. You with me? Once again, I need y'all with me. I mean, you with me? Schism is the division or disunion within, or separation from. A division within a church or religious body over some doctrine difference. You with me? Now. It would seem as this is a contradiction, but folks don't realize is that the anointing brings schisms. I mean, the anointing brings schisms, but the first schism that takes place is within you. And some of us, hallelujah, we get caught up in the schism, but not in what Christ calls us to do. You with me? I mean, it says, there was a division, therefore, again, amongst the Jews. Hallelujah. What brought the division? It said there was a division for these saints. Are you with me? Are you with me? Come on, come on, let it go. Amen? The Greek word for four is dia. D-I-A, dia. D-I-A. Dia means through. It means by the means or grounds or reasons by which something is or is not done. Amen? It means through, by the means, grounds or reason. By which or for which something is or is not done. Amen? Are y'all with me? I need you with me. There was a division, therefore, again, amongst the Jews for these saints. Saints is the Greek word logos. You with me? L-O-G-O-S. Logos. Once again, the Bible says, in the beginning was the logos, and the logos was with Elohim, and the logos was Elohim. So in other words, the logos brings schisms. Amen? Amen? Holly, y'all with me? Holly, the English word schism comes from the Greek word. The Greek word when you read division is schisma. It's the same word, but with an A at the end. Amen? So when you say schism, amen, it is actually this word, schisma, which is spelled the same way with an A at the end. Amen? Holly, so when you read the word division, what was the schisma? Holly, was the law God's. Amen. The law has come to your life not to confuse you, but to divide what doesn't belong. Now, while the law God is dividing what doesn't belong, he gives you the ability to catch your breath. Amen. The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's not about being double-minded. It's about leaving what Christ told you to leave in order for you to go on. You always know what Christ wants you to do because that's what peace is. Yes. If you don't have peace, Christ is not there. If you don't have peace, y'all ready to hear this? You're on the wrong side of the schism. <laughs> Are you with me? If you don't have peace, you're on the wrong side of the schism. Amen? Once again, schisma, amen, it means split, division. It means tear, dissension. It comes from the Greek word schizo. S-C-H-I-Z-O. S-H-C-I-Z-O which means to rip, to tear, to split. You with me? Now listen, I mean, while Christ is ripping and tearing what doesn't belong in your life, he's allowing you to catch your breath. What we have to do is we have to side with the Lagos. Our very ministry, y'all with me? Our very ministry brings schisms in other ministries. We bring schisms over the name Yahweh. 
We bring schisms over the name Yahweh. I mean, now what is it, Yahshua, what is it that's bringing the schism? What's bringing the schism is the Logos. It is the, the Logos itself. Remember, Logos is another title for Christ. It is the Word. It is the Logos that brings the schism. I mean, Yahweh doesn't give you the Logos in order to confuse you. He gives you the Logos for you to have the strength to know what side to be on. He gives you the Logos to know what to flow in, what to become, and what to walk in the fullness thereof. Are you with me, saints? But when this happens in the name of Yahshua, you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he's called to do. Come forth, I do very speedily. So here it is that the Heavenly Father, Christ, means anointed. It brings a schism. What does it bring a schism? Because now it's dividing the spirit from the flesh. Are you with me, saints? Amen. The Bible says, hallelujah, a fleshly mind is enmity against the Heavenly Father. Amen. Hallelujah. But we've been given the mind of Christ. So when we have the, uh, the fleshly mind, the fleshly mind wars against us. So Christ comes in, he brings his word, he gives his law of God. His law of brings a schism against the fleshly mind. When he brings that schism in the name of Yahshua, he gives you an air of power. I mean, he allows you to refresh. He allows you to, to rest. For you, hallelujah, to have peace in what he is removing from you. Now, what, while he is pulling you out into his victory, I need you to listen very speedily. While he's pulling you out, the only time you'll have trouble if you resist. Pull back up. And what's taking place is that some of us, when the schism came in, when the divide came in, it came in to cut off, you ready? It came in to circumcise, to cut off what's not needed. Amen. And some of us, we're trying to hold on to what he doesn't want us to have, but in the process, his grace allows you to catch your breath. Amen. But while you're catching your breath, hallelujah, he called you to be mighty. He called you to be strong. He called you to be delivered. He called you to be free. Are you with me? Now listen to this. I'm going to let y'all go after this. You can sit down, Mr. Princess. And I want you to catch this before I let you leave. Everyone who has children, your greatest fear is that your children will make the same bad choices you did. Then you come to realize you really can't pray that out of them. Come on, saints. Come on, I got saved at the age of nine. For all you don't know what that means, that, that means I knew I was doing wrong, I knew I was going to hell, and I knew why I was going to hell. But now that I'm older, now that I'm older, bro, I know that he was waiting me out. I want all of you to leave this morning with a new faith. Yes. I'm going to wait out the bag that's trying to crush you. Because right now, Christ has sent a schisma in us. We know which way we're supposed to go to, but we also know we don't always choose. We don't always choose the right way. I'm going to tell you this. Some of y'all can't handle what I'm about to say. I mean, I, um, I was very picky. I didn't learn about love until late in my life. I mean, um, I, I knew two things. I knew I was the only son. Uh, because I was the only son, I knew, and I, I'm not ashamed, I was a mama's boy. I mean, when you're a mama's boy, when you're a mama's boy, you don't want to break your mama's heart. So I couldn't bring no girl to my mama's house to break her heart. I mean, and then being old school, y'all don't do this today, but in old school, you never bought your sin home. You always kept your sin in the street. You know what I'm saying? And then people say, I thought I saw you with you. And you you guys were like, no, nah, I don't think you saw me. <laughs> Today people are like, yeah, that was me. You know, like, nah, I, don't, I don't think you saw me. You know, especially if you had your Bible in your hand, you're like, nah. <laughs> you, I mean, not like you were all out loud. You just like, you try to remind them. You know, <laughs> No more. They like, oh, oh, oh. They're like, yeah, I'm a player. Yeah, yeah. They can rap about it. I'm a player. I'm a player. You know, in the old days, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't promote that. You know? <laughs> um, but I always knew that I couldn't. No, I'm, I'm, I'm raising my doors. Don't, don't bring your boyfriends home. I don't want to meet no boyfriends. I don't want, I, <laughs> I'm laughing because Allison has always had a boyfriend. I remember Allison was kindergarten, we went on her boyfriend's house. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Bauer, 
Ford. I remember that name. You know, and um, um, his mother cooked shrimp for the first time. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, sure, wasn't me. Huh? Oh my goodness. <laughs> but um, I didn't learn about love until I, I was 30. After 30. When you play with love before that time, you get in trouble. Y'all not with me. Because when you're in love, you just think, you know, when you're in love, you think it's going to last forever. <laughs> Y'all not with me. Young people, when you, that's the problem, you know, can I tell y'all something about men? I'm going to let y'all go. Men change. What they like in their 20s, they don't always like in their 30s. Nope. You know what I'm saying? I got married at 39. I, I wasn't, when, I, wanted, I was into something different when I was 20. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was in something completely different in, in my 20s and my 30s. You know what I'm saying? But when you mature, you know, you know what you want. But anyway, to make a long story short, what I'm thankful about is that if I would have known about love, I would have played around with it. But you begin to see how Yahweh perfects. What I want you to remember from today's message is this. Christ loves you so much. I'm going to step on on faith then. Can I step on on faith? Yes. None of y'all going to hell. Because the Heavenly Father is going to wait you out. 